This video is an explanation of the cardiac and vascular function curves uh, with some animations. So this part, part one, is going to talk about what these two curves actually mean and what the cardiac vascular function curve is. And then there will be a part two which will explain what the shifting of these curves mean. So here is the actual cardiac vascular function curve. In red, you have cardiac output compared with right atrial pressure, and then in blue, you have venous return compared to right atrial pressure. When these two graphs are combined into one, it can help us predict what's going to happen to these variables when you have certain circumstances like exercise or hemorrhaging. So the first thing you want to understand is how preload and contractility relate to cardiac output. So here we have a graph comparing what happens during diastole, which is this line shown in purple, versus systole, which is this line shown in green. During diastole, the more you fill the heart, the higher your pressure. So it's like blowing up a balloon. The more air you blow into it, the larger the volume and the higher the pressure. And at the end of systole, it's this tiny little thing. And as the blood fills the heart during diastole, you end up with this at your end diastolic volume right, which has increased pressure. At this point, your muscle fibers are also way more stretched out than here, correct? So here looking at systole, you see that the more volume or more stretch that there is, the more cardiac output there is. So increased pressure during systole means you're going to eject more blood. Um, so why does it drop off right here? So after this gray line, cardiac output or your systolic pressure will drop because, remember your actin and myosin chains, um, they have an optimum length. So as your volume increases, this actin and myosin chain will also increase. Uh, increasing the distance between these two will cause increased contractility. However, like I said before, there's an optimum, optimum length. So if you overshoot it, that contractility is going to actually decrease and therefore your systolic pressure won't be as effective and you'll have decreased cardiac output. And thus, this gray line represents your optimum actin myosin fiber length. Now let's go back to the actual cardiac and vascular function curves. And just looking at the red line, which represents your cardiac output versus your right atrial pressure, we just said that the more preload there is, the more your heart will pump out, right? So your preload is the blood volume that's going in. That goes to your lungs, which then comes back around to the left side of the heart and then is pumped out to your body, and that is known as your cardiac output. So as you increase this preload or increase your right atrial pressure, right, this increased preload is going to cause increased cardiac output. So therefore you see increased right atrial pressure because of this increased preload or increased blood coming in is going to cause increased blood coming out. So that's why this line goes straight up. However, at a certain point, no matter how much you increase the blood coming in or the preload, your cardiac output is not going to increase anymore and therefore you get this plateau. Now let's move on to the venous function curve. So this is a little bit more confusing. Here you're measuring atrial pressure versus how much blood is coming back to the heart or your venous return. So I like to think of it as this. Here you have your heart and then your body. There's a pressure difference between your body or the veins, right, versus the pressure in your atria. Let's say the pressure in our body is 100 and the pressure in our atria is zero. Then the pressure gradient or the difference between the two will be 100. So things like to flow from high pressure to low pressure, right? So with a pressure gradient of 100, most of your blood from your body is going to return to your heart. Now let's increase the pressure of the atria. So going from, let's say, here to here, right? Let's say that's about 50. Your body pressure or your venous pressure is going to stay the same. Now the pressure gradient difference is going to be 50. Right? So now less blood is going to go from your venous or your veins back to your heart. So that explains why this line decreases. With increased atrial pressure, you have 
decreased Venus return. Now the last point that we have to talk about is this, which is your Vmax or your mean systemic pressure. And that's where this Venus function line intersects with this axis. So let's go back to the picture. Now your venous pressure is always going to stay the same, in our case 100, unless your blood volume increases and then this number will increase, or your blood volume, like in hemorrhaging, will decrease and then this number will decrease. So your right atrial pressure will increase up to a point where it will equal this venous pressure, in our case 100, right? And then the pres pressure gradient will be zero. So there will be no blood flow from your body to your heart, and therefore your venous return will be zero, and thus why your mean systemic pressure is at this point, because your mean systemic pressure is actually what I've been calling the venous pressure here. So part two, again, is going to go over what the shifts in the graph mean. Thanks for watching.